Mountain Blade 2 has six kingdoms to choose from, and within those six are a smattering of units that you'll be training from lowly recruit all the way up to their tier 5 Giga Chadley goodness. In this video today, I want to reboot an older series I did during the early access of Bannerlord and review the entire unit tree of each respective kingdom. Today, we'll be focusing on the Batanians. This is, of course, not a guide of min maxing, but a means of giving you an idea of how well a specific kingdom's soldiers stack up against the other soldiers of a similar rank. I'll be assigning each unit a rating of low, mid, or high. This way you'll be able to get an idea of our, how well that unit performs compared to its peers based off of the use case. Perhaps the skills and weapons are all over the place, making it a low grade unit, or maybe it's the best of the best across the board, making that high grade a Charles. You can quickly navigate to any tier of soldier by using the chapters in both the timeline and the description. As always guys, if you end up enjoying the content, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Each one of those things helps out any content creator you watch in a huge way to aid in combating the dreaded YouTube algorithm. Well, let's get started here on the Batanian unit guide for Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Loading into the game, we're going to take a look at Tier 2. Of course, we skip Tier 1 because that's just what you do. And we're going to be starting with the Batanian Clan Warrior. Now, um, we've already done this list before, right? We've already taken a look at Batania and we've given them all their respective grades. And before, the Clan Warrior had a high rank. And it retains that, mainly because if you look at its skill set, we're looking at 40 athletics, 40 one-handed, 20 throwing, and 40 polearm. Now, 20 throwing is not amazing, and they do only have highland throwing daggers, but they still have that capability. They can throw, they've got a nice good sword here, they've got a nice enough shield, I don't really like that shield, um, and they've got a polearm. On top of it, they have some of the best armor, um, according to the level 2... Um, uh, a warrior. So I actually really enjoy the Batanian clan warrior still. Comparing it over here to the Sturgeon warrior who's absolute garbage, the footman which I just don't like very much, the infantryman which has really good armor but no pole arm, the tribesman which is a really good all-rounder, doesn't have throwing but that's okay because it makes up it with strong armor, a decent enough spear, not very long, but a good uh, shield and a good um, hammer here that is uh, going to be nice to also threaten into higher ranges which the footman gets as well. And then the Kazate footman has low armor, no pole arm, and has a light mace though, so at least has some use cases outside of just simply combat. But I, I still give the Batanian clan warrior a high rank. I think it it tr it stays true to its roots and holds that uh, that tier two in a really good rank or, or location. Now the wood runner compares very well into the woodsman, and we've talked about how the woodsman just doesn't really get off the ground because the wood runner gets all the things the woodsman gets but in addition to having better armor and a shield so it has survivability able to push into raider or into skirmisher far easier than the uh, woodsman does for sturgia and then the entire sturgian archer line is just rubbish to begin with anyway and who doesn't like a bare chested nipple touting batanian wood runner running at you with a fish harpoon when you say all that out loud it sounds like it's from a weird like a uh, uh, funny video on YouTube but decent enough armor not amazing right these guys are not going to have amazing armor and you do have to consider that when they're in your front line they will get minced up for that very reason um, but I do think that they they kind of hold true to what they were in the past and I give them still that high rating um, so a good showing for Batania's tier 2 retaining both high in the clan warrior and the woodrunner position Moving into tier three, we get the Batanian trained warrior, and it's a little bit better of a spot than it was before, but it also is in a precarious spot as well. So looking at the stat distribution, we've got 70 athletics, 70 one-handed, and 70 polearm, all of which we can see right here, a Tarj still present on the character, and a nice little smattering of uh, different items for uh, armor and helmet. The tall helmet is a quite nice head armor at 38, but you can see this kind of moving across. You also have a leather studded armor that only has a head armor of 10, which is unfortunate. This one kind of that middle ground of uh, 20. But the chest piece is still pretty good, 14, four and six across the board here on all three settings with different kind of shoulder armor pieces and that's kind of that is what it is. Looking at some of the other things like the Sturgeon soldier who is just the best in class i think at level at a uh, tier three you just get so much armor and so many other things applied to it then looking at the spearman you do get also a really good armor but poor um leg and boot or hand and boot situations and a poor head situation for the kazate spearman so it's kind of interesting because it's not 
terrible like the Spearman, for sure. It's not amazing like the Sturgeon Warrior. Uh, the trained infantryman kind of like still shores up stuff uh, by being able to throw things. And the footman has a really good mace that it can do a lot of good damage which with, which I just really like. I really like having low tier soldiers that have access to maces to punch into higher tier things with much more armor. So I think that the trained warrior, while having access to a tall tip spear, which is very nice, uh, a kind of a shield that I don't like very much, but a good setting of swords here, a good... Um, What's it called? A good uh, uh, selection of swords with 57 swing damage, ooh, 71 swing damage, and then I think this is also, and this is 71 as well. I, I do like that situation, but I, I still put them at a mid rank because they're not amazing defensively or offensively, but they're not terrible at the same time. They still have a good set of armor, retaining their rank that they had before in the previous kind of go at this video. Next in two is the Raider, and the Raider is funky because the Raider has a Norse hatchet. I think on all three of its situa on situations, all three of its sets. Ridged Iron Broadsword, which is nice, and a Norse Hatchet. You guys know my stance on axes. Um, but we get a tall tipped long spear. And just, just as a point of fact, I like the axe a lot if you're using it, but the AI seems to really not use axes very well and gets themselves into really bad positions. It's why I don't like the axe on my soldiers as much. And a tall tip spear as well. But all three of them have Highland throwing axes. Great set of, of throwing axes here at least. But looking at their skills, they get 70 athletics, 70 one-handed, 70 throwing, and 30 polearm. So they're in a very weird spot, I think. Um, I, I would rather they had less throwing and more polearm. If I wanted something to do throwing damage, I'd have the skirmisher doing it. Especially because the Falksman doesn't have throwing weapons. The veteran Falksman does. So... Sure, I understand the progression of throwing on this character, but I don't think that we should necessarily sink the points in throwing and have it have such a meager throwing capability here. This only can throw three axes unless you put it with a captain that can boost that throwing capability. So you kind of have to consider those things when you're looking at the Raider, and I think that it still retains that low rank. There's not many things that compare to this. The, the uh, Aserai Axeman kind of loosely does, Mamluk Axeman over here, but... This is already coming into its shock variation, right? The Raider still kind of has a funky spot wherein it's kind of like an infantry soldier. It has the same armor, almost the same exact armament. It just doesn't have the Falks of the Falksman or the Romphalia of the veteran Falksman. So again, it's in a really weird spot. So I think it still retains that low ranking. I think if you if you wanted to kind of make this better, remove its... its uh, polearm skill and put it into two-handed and give it a two-handed weapon like give it a two-handed uh, a sword i think that'd be kind of cool for the raider to have a two-handed sword and a polearm it would then kind of fit into being the beginning of that shock troop without the necessity of kind of wondering what the hell is this thing kind of doing in my army i just want it to be a falksman faster so i think the raider is in a really funky spot because of that moving into the batanian skirmisher we have a character that has kind of come into its own with good athletics good one-handed and decent throwing and a wasted amount of skill in polearm Remember though, and th this is just kind of worth noting for anyone wondering why do they have polearm, if they run out of ammunition and they run out of, uh, or their sword isn't really doing it for whatever their task is, they can pick up a polearm if it fits whatever they, their AI is telling them to do. Um, it's why some units have throwing or bow that otherwise do not have access to those unit, those weapons, they will pick up a throwing weapon or a bow if it means that it can actually use it to the best of its ability in whatever the AI situation is. So for the skirmisher here, it doesn't really have any competition. It used to have competition with the Aserai um, skirmisher, which used to be the tier three throwing for the Aserai. Now they just have a light archer in that position here. So there's really no other um, throwing infantry that can kind of compete with that Batanian Skirmisher. And I honestly, I think the Batanian Skirmisher is way better than it was before. It has two stacks of simple javelins that can give it eight total shots without having a captain in there. Its armor is pretty good at this point at, at tier three. It's got comparable armor to his tier three trained warrior counterpart, if not a little bit less, of course. And it's got a good enough shield and, and a hatchet. Of course, you know my stance on hatchets. But I would still kind of say that this is a mid rank just because it doesn't necessarily have the full use of its skills. I'd rather this had 70, 70, 70 athletics, one-handed throwing. Um, that way I just get a little bit more out of its throwing capabilities. It kind of fits a little bit better into its its um, overall stance. Um, and I think that putting it as high 
does means that there's there's no room for there's no room for change here and i think that the skirmisher still can definitely change to be a little bit better at what it's doing and especially because it has no competition in class let's move here into tier four so with tier four we get the batanian pickled warrior i know it's picked um and it's a really solid choice because you have 100 athletics 110 and one-handed and 110 polearm a nice set of sets with not much variation here uh you do have your fine seal cavalry broadsword your fine seal cab broadsword hey and guess what a fine seal cavalry broadsword so you have a nice distribution of very good high damage weapon tier five um broadswords which i really like you do get your highland large shield which is a bit bigger of a shield but what i really like is the reinforced highland spear because it is braceable so they will actually use this if the if cav starts to charge into them they'll brace that down if they're in the proper stance and they'll take that cav charge like total champs i definitely give these guys a high grade something that they had before that they just are re are retaining maintaining that strong infantry presence for Britannia. Britannia, of course, has amazing archers, which we'll get to in the Noble line, but this kind of keeps that really strong front line for Britannia. Now, on to the Scout, oh, to compare it to, by the way, the Britannian uh, Picked Warrior also has just great armor. 31, 10, 13. You can compare this over to Volandia, who just I hate. Uh, the Sturgeon Spearman, who has a pretty comparable armor, armor to Volandia, but a really good skill set and a really good amount of other armor. The Astrai Infantry, which has very good armor as well, and throwing weapons. So you can see that being that high tier, it's got that a lot of use cases and can kind of compare across the board to some of the other tier 4 bros um, out there. Moving into the Batanian Scout, we have our first little bit of um, cavalry and the only bit of cavalry outside of the progression to the horsemen for Batania. And the Scout's pretty interesting. It's got a hatchet and a broadsword. And it also has a Targe as well as a reinforced Highland Spear, which is couchable, which is quite nice. It has the Batanian Hobby as well as some pretty good armor here with the Highland Reinforced Mail over Tartan. Uh, but it really doesn't have, in my opinion, it doesn't have a full kind of use in the army. It feels kind of funky. I feel like Batania is almost meant to exclusively be on foot. I feel kind of odd whenever I don't use uh, foot soldiers. But the comparison point over here would be the, is it the knight? No, it is the, it's not the light cavalry, but I'm just going to get us to it, is just the normal cavalry for uh, the... Blondia, we have them at 120 riding, 80 one-handed, and 110 polearm. Compare that back to the scout, we're looking at 100 across the board. And the cav has really solid armor, uh, doesn't have a couchable lance, has a ridged arming sword, and a reinforced cavalry shield. So you can see that those things are very present with the mid cavalry, or with the Blondian cavalry, which we, which we ranked as mid. Looking at Kazate... We get the Lancer, which is just a, a Giga Chad here, 100, 100, 100, but just so much armor across the board and a really strong mount um, that also has armor on it. A great saber, a good shield, and a decent enough lance here. So it's kind of interesting because the Scout, I would definitely mark as better than the Cavalry. I don't know if I'd necessarily mark it better than the Lancer. I think the fact that it does have a couchable lance does put it up there with the Lancer. Um, and I think that that kind of offsets the amount of defensive capabilities that the Lancer has versus the Scout. So with that kind of in mind, um, I think that the Scout is somewhere between mid or high, depending on how you want to use them. I'm going to go with a mid rank for this because I feel like the Scout just doesn't have a proper place in the Batanian army. I, I feel like if I'm looking at this from an overall army perspective and I'm strictly going Batania, I'd rather go down with the Picked Warrior or the Oath Sworn or the Wildling than going into a Horseman. And we'll explain more about the Horseman in its respective location, um, especially with the fact that I have to go through volunteer to warrior to train warrior into the scout. It's such a hard road to get into any cavalry that at that point, I'd rather just have more infantry. If I could go into a tier three cavalry before jumping into scout, like if the scout was a tier three and I had like, I don't know, train scout or some shit like that, then I think I'd actually be okay with the scout and I'd put it at a high rank because I think it has an awkward place in the military. I'm going to go ahead and give it a mid rank. Just in the same reason that for the Bucellarii, for the Imperials, it, fell, it feels out of place by that 
progression point in the military. Moving into the Falksman, we have a very, very, very strong uh, shock troop, probably one of the best ones in the game. Lion Exodus did an amazing breakout of all the shock troops and their kind of punchability. And the Falksman with the 1.9 patch had a huge leap in its kill death ratio, as well as just how overall it well it performs against low tier infantry, high tier infantry, and other cavalry. Like amazing stats on these guys. So the Falksman definitely gets now a high ranking. What I would like to see though is that they retain the throwing weapon. I think it's kind of rubbish that they don't have one, especially they've got a hundred throwing skill in there. I know I said for the skirmisher, a mid rank is because there's room for improvement. And even though the Batanian, Batanian, the Batanian Falksman has room for improvement, they already perform so well at what they're doing. I think putting them in mid would just be uh, um, an injustice to them. Moving into our veteran skirmisher, uh, again, so high rank, high rank on the Falksman, by the way. <laughs> um, into our veteran skirmisher, we have a really strong soldier 100 athletics, 61 handed, 90 throwing, 100 polearm. So with that, we have a very strong soldier that has a kind of mismatched smattering of skills. A very strong armor piece here at the Ranger Mail with rough tied bracers and wooden boots. You can see that's the only set it gets access to. And harpoons, which are just like throwing lances, dude. They're so strong. That stack of 10 is really good with them. Give them a throwing captain. They'll have even more. They'll be able to break shields. All this cool stuff. I think the issue with them, they used to be ranked high in the last time we did this. I'm going to be giving them a mid rank because... They still are great at what they're doing, but that's 100 wasted polearm. I'm not saying give them a polearm. I'm saying give them more throwing and more one-handed. I'd love to see throwing at 110 and then give that one-handed all the way up to 100. This does make them comparable to the picked warrior, and it does kind of cause a bit of a conflict as to which one you go with. But I've always said that the wildling is an amazing soldier that people kind of bypass um, in exchange for the oath swarm, which are both two great warriors we'll talk about in a little bit here. But I think the veteran skirmisher drops from high to mid because of that polearm skill being so wasted. I'd rather see that again in throwing in one handed. But uh, just to recap here, we're looking at high rank for the picked warrior, a mid rank for the scout because of the odd placement in the army high rank for the Falksman, and a mid rank for the Veteran Skirmisher. All right, the cream of the crop, tier five, Batanian Oath Sworn. Let's take a look-see. So we have Athletics at 130 with one-handed and polearm and 60 throwing here. That's pertinent because this unit does have throwing weapons uh, with the Highland Throwing Axe. Now they also have one-handed bearded axes, which do suck. Iron reinforced Highland large shields, shields, which are good, and a braceable shield yet again, which is very nice. Very good set of armor. Like very, very, very good set of armor. Luxury Brigandine at 53, 10, 18 is really awesome. Ridged Helm here with head armor 46. Uh, good bracers and good boots. Overall, a very well-equipped unit just that suffers with that bearded axe. That bearded axe, in all of my testing of throwing all the tier 5 infantry against each other, is such a detriment. You go from a tier 5, very nice damage in the Picked Warrior, then you lose it. You go down to a tier 4 with the bearded axe and you don't get the amount of damage, especially the amount of reach the bearded axe has. Again, I know what everyone's saying, I love the axes personally when I'm using them on my character, but the AI for some reason does not seem to do them really good justice. So the Oath Swarm, I unfortunately have to give a mid rank. And the reason I'm giving a mid rank is because it's not as bad as the Volandian Sergeant. And I know people are saying you're a little too hard on the Sergeant. I'm not. The Volandian Sergeant used to be badass, but now he just seems to not do well compared to all the other, um, uh, uh, all the other infantry soldiers for some reason weird reason i it it's one of my favorite ones but i just hate that it doesn't perform as well as, as it used to and we compared to legionary which is again a really solid one the darken which is a great middle ground i always i'm always going to give the darken a mid because it's got that point of being like it has tons of room for improvement but it does really well at what it does so it, it's just kind of right there in that that strong center point and the sturgeon uh, uh heavy spearman and the asteri veteran infantry both hold those high ranks as well so the Batanian Oath Sworn, a great soldier held back by an unfortunate presence of the one-handed bearded axe. That braceable spear is a really, really good touch. I think if this just had axes for one set and swords for another, I'd put it into high. Or just swords all the way around. Or just even having better axes. I just think that that is such a huge anchor against them that it's unfortunate. 
Into the Batanian Horsemen, again, we get a unit that is coming all the way down here into tier 5 with a great set of armor with the Scale Warlord armor, 37, 16, 18. The fur-rimmed gauntlets or gloves with scaled boots and the uh, Glintor pony, let it be known here, war, uh, far and wide, with the helm with face guard, a braceable but not couchable steel tip hook spear. Now, one thing that this has always kind of had going for it is that it does have one of the longest rank uh, lengths of any spear of any cab unit so 234 length is very good um, but again not being couched does kind of suck and the reinforced targe is kind of a small shield to have on horseback also you're dealing with an axe and also a broadsword with 130 130 130 with all those skill sets not terrible not amazing let's compare it to the heavy lancer and the vanguard those are our other two non-noble line um, cav unit. So with the Vanguard, we get 130, 130, 130 as well. With the Valenby Courser, a little bit better of a mount, I'd say, with some really good armor on it, and a Night Lance, which is couchable, a good shield, and an arming sword with only one set, with a great amount of armor here too. 34, 12, 12, just a really solid unit, but still at that mid rank. The Heavy Lancer here has even more armor across the board, a Karahan, which it had at uh, Tier 4 that it retained, which is an amazing mount. Very good speed, very good maneuverability with good charge damage and great hit points, and a lot of armor on it as well. A Cav Lance, which is, again, couchable. The Fine Steel Saber here, too. Really, really nice sword on combat with the, or on horseback with the Eastern Cav Shield. So... Oh, uh, let's look at the, the stats too. I believe it has, yeah, 150 riding, 130, 130 on the one-handed and the polearm. So looking at these guys, it's kind of like, it's kind of hard to say, right? When you look at all of them, because the Batanian Horseman has great armor, great survivability, good on horseback. But I still think that overall, it, it kind of falls short. I think it ultimately falls into the low category because I think that the Vanguard is better because of the braceable, um, of the couchable lance for sure it's not as long keep that in mind but couching a lance does so much damage that it's hard to pass up and the heavy lancer has a couch lance and way more riding a better horse and even more survivability the Batanian horseman it still has really good uh, hit points on this horse, a little bit better charge damage by two, not as fast speed or maneuverability as, say, the Kazate one. So I unfortunately have to give the horseman a low. Again, falling back on the statement of, I'd rather just get Oath Sworn. I'd rather have a longer line than a middling uh, amount of cavalry in my Batanian army. Now, onto our veteran Falksman. Again, falling back onto Lion Exodus's. Um, uh, information that he gave me the Falksman performs way better way 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 better than it ever used to in my previous videos I've said hey you don't upgrade the Falksman the veteran Falksman because the veteran Falksman's not that good I was wrong Lion Exodus told me other or showed me otherwise and definitely the veteran Falksman is an amazing unit 120 throwing 130 pull arm 130 athletics with a good amount of armor here and it performs almost better than every other uh max tier um shock troop so i'm going to be giving this also a high grade um so again huge shout out to lion exodus please check out his videos he has a lot of really amazing very number crunchy breakdowns of all the shock troops how they're performing as of 1.9 and how they really kind of stack up against low mid and high tier infantry soldiers and other cavalry to give you an idea of how well these guys truly perform having the romphalia is just an absolute or romphalia is absolute tank of a weapon it does so much damage and allows them to really just kill so much shit i it's it's so fun to watch them do their work so 130 120 132 on their skill set which gives them access to lots of throwing axes put them with a captain with good throwing skill and again those throwing axes are going to get even more stacks and just break through some shields so a high rank on the veteran falksman now moving into the wildling it's always really weird to me the Wildling performs better than the Oath Sworn in a lot of tests, which I hate. Like, I, it shouldn't be that way. And it only has one set, and that set has a really good sword. Look at that sword. It's better than the Oath Sworn. Look at the photograph. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. Iron Reinforced Highland Large Shield here as well, and two sets of hooked javelins with the same amount of armor that the uh, Oath Sworn has. This was a problem when I did this the first time around. The Wildling is a better frontline soldier than the oath sworn it's missing a pole arm which is worth noting right the oath sworn has your braceable pole arm which is sick but the wildling does all the same things that the oath sworn does only better except for that pole arm 140 athletics 121 handed 130 throwing it's 
It's a track star. It's going to throw some really deadly weapons, and it's going to do some really good damage in melee. I really like it. I really, really like this unit. It, it still retains that high rank that it had before, and I think it's just because it just does so much of what it should do really damn well. And it throws some really devastating javelins. So let's move into the Batanian Mounted Skirmisher. Another funky unit that is in that same kind of place as like the Bustlarii and other units that just kind of come in late in the army's roster that don't really feel very good. So let's go to the Hardened Brigand as a comparison point. The other, oh, I'm sorry, it's a Horse Raider. It's a Horse Raider. Sorry, sorry, Horse Raider. Now, of course, you also look at the Ferris, but that is a noble unit and we don't compare those because their skills and everything are jacked all over the place. So... The Batanian Mounted Skirmisher has one stack of javelins in both sets. It has 150 throwing, 130 one-handed, and 130 riding. It still has really nice armor with the rough scale mail, um, and it also has a Glentor pony as well as the, the Batanian Horseman has, with really good armor. That's actually really solid armor. Comparing this to the Sturgian Horse Raider, which has 130, 130, 130, and more application, Right, I get a fine steel spear on the horse raider. I do not get that on the mounted skirmisher. I get a big large round shield. I get a little itty bitty targ. I get broad blade javelins, which are tier four, versus the hooked javelin, which is tier four. Uh, I thought this was actually going to be lower. Um, 117 pierce stack five versus 101 pierce stack five. So they do get that, that kind of leg up there. Of course, you have kind of a weird weapon set too when it comes to this and you don't get the armor on the Sturgeon uh, Horse Raider. So kind of comparing those two, I think that the Batanian Mounted Skirmisher is in another funky spot. And again, I think it kind of comes down to being in a weird position of I'm not going to really want to progress my veteran skirmishers into Mounted Skirmishers unless I really want that type of unit in my army in excess, especially because I'll need an actual war mount for them. It seems a little bit of a, it seems like a huge sink to dive into a unit like the Mounted Skirmisher, which is not going to have a ton of support unless I go into the Horsemen. And I'd rather have an army of Oathsworn and Wildlings than Horsemen and Mounted Skirmishers. So I'm going to give this a mid rank which it had before, it retains, and again, it's because of that weird placement. I think if the Mounted Skirmisher had something that started at Tier 4 or Tier 3, I'd be more compelled to want to try and experiment into that route for Batania, but I'm not going to want to suffer a volunteer all the way down into Tier 5 to finally put them on a horse to throw a throwing weapon, which they only have one stack of. I mean, they don't have a pull arm, so we'll just give them another stack of... of um, javelins and then this thing becomes a little bit scarier right the wildlings got two stacks so it can be throwing for a long time if the mounted skirmisher was like a dedicated throwing cavalry unit that i'm it's just chucking two stacks of javelins that kind of sounds a bit more intimidating and a bit scarier than just simply the way it is now it's kind of meant like a brawler and a, a throwing weapon that kind of just feels out of place to me and i don't really like that very much now, of course, you might have a different opinion on that, and this might be a high rank for you, but I still think that that falls into a mid. So to recap, we have a mid rank on the Oathsworn, low rank on the Horsemen, a high rank on the Veteran Falksman, a high rank on the Batanian Wildling, and then a mid rank on the Batanian Mounted Skirmisher. Moving into the Noble line, this will be the easiest one to review. I'm not even going to look at the other archers because the Batanian Fian noble line is probably without a doubt the best noble line of all the noble lines because it's just so goddamn good. Like this guy with his 60 bow at tier 2, 40 athletics, 20, or I'm sorry, 41 uh, two handed. And he has a really good bow at tier two, a ranger bow with barbed arrows and an iron broadsword. Doesn't have the best armor, but it's an archer at tier two. It does the job. Moving into the highborn, it gets into a little bit better armor here, right? And we get already a better bow with the same arrows and a highland broadsword. And 100 bow at tier three. It's just, it's so not worth comparing. Oh, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the light archer. Uh-oh, you have 70 bow. <laughs> and just a meager hunting bow, right? That, that's what I mean. It's just leaps and bounds above every single other archer in the game. Every single one of them is so strong. Even when you get another hero, you get into a real hero. With a lowland longbow, 
stacked bodkin arrows you're already getting up to a much better arrow with 32 stack on it that's amazing and you're getting a northlander wide fuller great sword you have 110 two-handed 130 bow did i look at the wrong stat yeah, okay, I did not. <laughs> 130 bow, 100 athletics on these guys. They're just track stars. They're 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 probably like the single best infantry and um, archer in the game because they've got amazing survivability at their max tier, even at the other other tiers with amazing armor, really good set of arrows, really good set of skills with 222 handed, 260 bow, 170 athletics, even 90 one handed. So meaning. They'll pick up a one-handed sword in a really trying situation if they think if the AI thinks it needs to. A great woodland longbow here, which could be better, um, but still a really badass two-handed sword. They they'll kill damn near everything you throw them at. They're great in sieges because once they actually do some damage um, and you breach the walls or the uh, the siege towers have actually landed, you could send them into the fray if you want, and they'll clean up house because the length on these swords is not too long that in a siege it's cumbersome it's just long enough to do max amounts of just destructive damage and the nice thing too about the two handers here you can actually give them a captain who has two-handed skill and get a lot of use out of it depending on how you want to use your fians so honestly the the batanian noble line is high across the board it, they're just token 420 high 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 and high <laughs> so that is our batanian roster let's take a look at a overall review of my thoughts on the army as a whole so the batanian army is very solid on foot and i think that's kind of the way it should be right they've got amazing archers we've just gone over with the uh, noble line and they have got weird spots though in their military i think it's nice that the clan warrior is really good into the trained warrior the pick warrior is amazing, but then the Oath Sworn starts to fall short, and it's got a lot of shortcomings that could easily just be fixed with its axe. The Veteran Skirmisher is really good, but it's got a mismatching of skill. The Wildling is better than the Oath Sworn. That was like that a long time ago. It's still kind of true now. The Oath Sworn is in a far better play, uh, place than it ever was, though. It's worth noting that the Oath Sworn used to have completely mismatched skills, it used to have riding and not athletics, it used to have throwing and not one handed. It's in a, such a better place. So the mid now of Oath Sworn is unlike the Oath Sworn of old. Like it's way, way better. But I think that Batania needs an, uh, another branch here for its horsemen. I, don't, I think you could even just get rid of the Mounted Skirmisher. Or if you wanted to make the Mounted Skirmisher a thing, give it more javelins. That would actually make it a little bit more useful and make me go, well, okay, maybe I don't want to go with the Wildlings. I'll go with the Mounted Skirmisher. It feels like a much bigger departure from the Skirmisher here, the Veteran Skirmisher, than otherwise right like if i go veteran skirmisher to wildling i'm basically making a really good infantry soldier if i go veteran skirmisher to mounted skirmisher i'm kind of buying in to that mounted javelin throwing unit but it only has one stack it kind of really feels lackluster especially if it doesn't have a pole arm or any of the other things that make the sturgeon um horse thief or hardened brigand or a horse brigand whatever it is or the uh, uh the ferris for asrai useful right those guys have such a wide range of weapons and skills that they can punch into a lot of different things the mounted skirmisher just kind of runs out of its use after it throws the four or five of its stack so that i think is kind of funky if i were to redo this i would make the raider a two-handed weapon user drop the pole arm or drop uh, I'll maybe do pole arm and two-handed weapon that'd be kind of cool or two-handed weapon and throwing weapon because that way it progresses into the falksman a little bit cooler a little bit easier and you get two-handed weapons in the base infantry line of batania outside of the falksman and the fian champions so i think that that's a really cool way to do that and if i were to redo things i would make a level a tier three batanian horse soldier even though it doesn't really fit into like the ethos and the lore of batania i think if I wanted to really make this worthwhile, I, I just think the scout and the horseman aren't there. Uh, maybe boosting them and making them better actual options so I actually have to decide going from trained warrior into pick warrior or trained warrior into scout. I go, oh, that's actually a really good horse soldier. I'll go that route. But again, that's not really the focus of Batania. Where they score well is where they're supposed to score well, in my opinion. So 
here's the army as it is go ahead and let me know in the comment section below how you're feeling about batania uh, i think that everyone agrees that the the fian is just one of the best units in the game hands down bar none so it kind of makes like the entire army roster moot you, you could use an entire army of fians and and beat the game very very easily but go ahead and let me know what you think are there things that you would change are there things that i really sold short let it be known in the comment section below as always guys i think the next one we'll do will probably be kazate followed by the Aserai last on our unit guide list here but as always thank you so much for watching here today have a good one and take care